3.1, day two, um, measuring a linear association, how linear is something, that is the correlation. That's what we're going to be looking at today. So the correlation coefficient, as it's called, is a lowercase r. And it measures the strength and also the direction of a linear relationship, and it says between two quantitative variables. So they can't be categorical. Okay, so some facts about R. It's always a number between negative 1 and 1. If it's greater than 0, that means there's a positive association. Less than 0, you can probably guess, it means a negative association. And then values of R that are near 0, it's not close to negative 1 or 1, that means it's pretty much nonlinear. So it's a very weak linear relationship. And then the strength of the linear association would actually increase if it's close to the negative 1 or 1. And then in the rare case that you get a perfect 1 or a perfect negative 1, that means it's a perfect linear relationship. So 0 means not very linear. And the closer you get to the endpoints, 1 or negative 1, that means the data points are almost in a perfect line. All right, so you may have done a little bit in the past. Um, if I give you a scatter plot, you just give me a rough estimate as to how strong you think it is and in what direction it goes. So my hint, and my cue is always you can kind of draw ovals around the grouping, and then the skinnier the oval is, the more linear it is. So for the first example here, correlation r equals 0. Um, if you can't really tell, it's positive, negative, it's kind of just an open scatter. That means if it's r equals 0, there's no association at all. Not a positive association, not a negative association. There's no association at all. It's a big scatter. Um, the next one, you can start to see somewhat of a linear trend, and it's going negative. But r equals negative 0.3, that's pretty weak. So I would call that a weak negative. That's a weak negative association. r equals 0.5, so definitely a positive trend. Let's draw an oval around that. And we can call that like a moderate, a moderate positive trend. And notice the commas I'm putting between these. Weak, negative, moderate, positive. Right? I'm not describing negative and positive. I'm saying there's a weak association or there's a moderate association, and then I'm saying the direction. So they're separated by commas. And then R equals negative 0.7. Now it's starting to be really obvious. So I would call that a moderately strong negative trend. R equals 0.9. That's becoming really linear. So it's a really tight grouping. We draw an oval around it. I would just call that strong positive. And the last one here, bottom right corner. That's almost perfect. That's r equals negative 0.99. So almost perfectly linear, and it's negative. So I, you can call that maybe a very strong, very strong negative. Okay, and to be clear, the r value, these things, they tell you about the strength and the direction, but they don't tell you about the form. So you can actually get the r value in your calculator. It'll spit out a number, but it won't tell you whether it's truly linear or not. So it can't make a comparison for you, like linear versus nonlinear, or if it's curved. It can't make that comparison for you. But it can tell you the direction the points are going and the strength um, of the grouping. Okay, the formula, and I put it on here just um, for you to get a look at. But you're not going to have to do this by hand. You're going to use your calculator. You're going to use your calculator, even though this is on the AP exam formula sheet. You're not going to need this. Take a look. So for each individual, let's say we look at everybody's height and weight. So let's say your individual one, we take your height, subtract the mean height, divide by standard deviation, times, look at your weight, subtract the mean weight, divide by standard deviation. We take that product. And we do that for every single person. We add them all up, divide by n minus 1. That's how you get R. But again, you're not going to have to calculate that by hand. We're going to use our calculator. So to make sure your calculator does this, like when we do linear regression, the linreg function, just to turn it on, you hit second, zero, 
diagnostic on. And let me show you that really quick. So this is just, you can just leave it on your calculator. Um, it'll always give you the R value when you do len reg. So when your calculator just hits second, zero, that's the catalog that gives you every single function that your calculator does. Uh, and then go to diagnostic on. So I usually look under the D's and then go down to diagnostic on. And just hit enter when you get there. Oh, there it is. Enter, done. So now if I do linreg, like stat, calc, linreg, and we, have not, we haven't done this yet, but just to show you, now when I do linreg, it gives me an R value. So R equals negative, or R equals 0.92. So just turn diagnostic on, it'll give you R value in the output. Okay, so uh, a couple things you need to know about correlation. First of all, correlation makes no distinction between which variable is the explanatory, which variable is, which variable is the response. It doesn't care at all. Um, and it also doesn't change when you change the units of measurement. And R itself also has no unit of measurement. It's kind of like a z-score. It has no unit of measurement. So it doesn't care about the measurements on x or y. R itself doesn't even have a unit of measurement. And it doesn't care who's on the x-axis or who's on the y-axis. Like who's the explanatory, who's the response. R will still be unchanged. So let's go back to the track with example one here. So we already did the scatter plot, And here's a computer output for it. And it says the correlation is actually negative 0.84, which should make sense to you. Like it's a negative trend, and it's pretty strong in the linear direction there. It says interpret the, interpret the value of R in context. Okay, so without even looking at the graph, if you could cover that up, what does negative 0.84 mean? Okay, well, you know it's a negative association, and 0.84 is pretty strong. So that actually just confirms what we can see in the graph. So R equal to negative 0.84. So without even looking at the graph, we already know there's a strong negative association between what two variables? Well, that was the sprint time and the long jump distance. So that's how you'd interpret an R value. Without even looking at the graph, you already know the direction is negative, and then the strength, you could say it's strong because it's 0.84. It's, it's getting close to 1. Okay, so part B. What effect does the point at 7.25 comma 110 have on the correlation? Explain. So on my um, graph, it's red. And I'll, let's just go ahead and circle 7.25 comma 110. That's that point right there. So what effect does that have on the correlation? So what you need to be able to observe is that it's a little bit more outside the overall trend than any of the other points, right? If it was perfect, it might be like down here, like trying to make a perfect line. But it's outside the overall trend. So that takes away, that takes away from our strength. Like the grouping's not as good because this one is far off. So that's the point. So because this point is higher than we would expect, and that's just based on the overall trend that we see, so based on the pattern that we already have, This point's like off the pattern a little more than any of the other points. It's higher than we'd expect. We'd expect it to be down here somewhere. So that actually hurts the correlation. It makes it weaker. So if this was a perfect line, this would be negative 1 because it's negative. If this was a perfect line, the strength would be, um, and the correlation would be negative 1. But we're only at negative 0.84 because of points like this. So that actually means that instead of being negative 1, it makes the correlation closer to zero. So it hurts the correlation. So actually, if you took it out, I'm not going to have you calculate this, but if you took it out, the correlation without this point is actually negative 0.87. So it improves. It becomes stronger without that point, which should make sense. This point's a little bit off um, the trend. Without that point, if I cover it up here, the correlation would be negative 0.87. With that point, it makes it a little weaker. It's negative 0.84.
Okay, and just some cautions about correlation. Correlation requires that both variables be quantitative, at least, which should make sense. Quantitative variables are what we use for scatter plots. We don't even use categorical variables for scatter plots. Correlation does not describe curved relationships. Let me go back here. It doesn't describe curved relationships. <laughs> Only linear. And the other thing you need to know is correlation is not resistant. And it's strongly affected by outliers. So we actually just saw that a little bit. I'm not saying that the point we just looked at was an outlier, but it definitely um, made a difference in the, in the correlation and the R value. So it's not resistant to outliers. And we talked about resistance in Chapter 1. And the last thing here, correlation is not a complete summary of two variable data. It's not a complete summary because it only tells you about two things, the strength and the direction of the association. It doesn't tell you about the form, and it doesn't tell you where the outliers are, so it's not a complete summary of two variable data. If you want to provide a complete summary, you've got to actually look at the scatter plot, and then don't forget you've got to talk about DOFS, D-O-F-S. Okay, and the last little bit I want to provide you with is um, let's talk about numerical values when you call something strong or weak or moderately strong. What are you going to do? So we know R goes from negative 1 to 1. So I want to give you a few boundary points. It's just like a good estimate. So like 0 0.3, 0 0.7, it's actually negative 0.3. It's a little number line here. So I'm going to say anything between 0.3, like R is like 0.25 or like negative 0.28. Anything in there, I'm going to say is weak. And then let's go beyond that. Um, you can start to call it maybe moderate. So from like 0.3 to 0.7, you could say like, okay, you can observe some sort of like moderate trend, moderately strong or moderately weak or just moderate. And anything above 0.7, let's say that's strong. So like if it's 0.8 or negative 0.8, let's say that's strong. So some people like to think about it this way. They put on a number line and it's like, okay, well, if it's 0.5, that's a moderate um, association. Alright, that's all for these notes, and I'll see you in class.